Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan again and welcome back to my channel. So I'm pretty excited today because I'm going to continue on the face tracking application that we've been building over the last few videos. And today I'm going to be adding what I call an action. And I want to add an action because I want to be able to say, okay, if a specific area of my face is changing and is within the boundaries, I want to execute this method. Not only that, but I want to do it at the expression level. So if I have multiple things that I'm tracking on the face, I want to detect whether the expression is actually getting calculated. If I detect it, and then I want to do a callback, which is going to be the method that I'm going to be calling. So let's go into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys. So let me walk you through what I'm going to be doing today. So right now, the way that it works, and you've probably seen it in the previous videos, is that we have an expression configuration. And within that, we have a scriptable object, which is actually the expression. So in this case, I have a snarl. And if I double click it, it shows me all the different type of blend shapes that are required with the minimums and the maximums before you know this expression is actually detected. So what I want to do in this video is I want to add more properties to this. I want to detect whether you know one of these blend shapes is detected. And if it is detected, I want to call a method. So not only I want to do that at the blend shape level which is will will be for every you know every part of the face that I'm tracking but I also want to do it when I when I detect all of them so if I detect all of them which means that I'm detecting the expression then I want to call another method so let's go into visual studio code and I'll sh and I'll show you what I have in mind so I show you that I have a blend shape location enum which is actually a class that contains multiple classes so in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call it and we're going to call it executor. So we just call it action executor. And the responsibility of this guy is going to be to execute a method. And not only execute a method, but we'll have a delay that we can say whether we want to call that method after one second, after two seconds, or so on. Or if we set it to zero, it'll call it right away. So the first thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to need the method name. So I'm just going to say method name. And I'm also going to need a flow, which is going to be the delay. And perfect. So that's are the only two things. The other thing that we need is we need to decorate it uh, serializable because we want to be able to control this through the inspector. And what I'm going to do is at the blend shape range, at this level, I want to add another variable, which is going to be t of that type, action executor. And we can just call it action. So for those who might be wondering why I'm not using an actual action or a Unity action, the reason for that is because this is going to be living in a scriptable object, and I haven't found a way to do it. So this way, I can control you know, what method I'm going to be calling by the string name and then the delay. So this is what I, what I found to, be, you know, to actually work. So we'll go that way. And in later sessions, if I find a better way to do it, we can go back and then do a new iteration. Okay, excellent. So now what I'm going to do is I want to show you what, how this looks like if I go back into Unity. And we look at this gnarl. And we can see that I now have an action. And if I expand the action, I can, I can specify the method name. When this is detected, this is the method that I'm going to call and also provide a delay. So that's great, but I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it at this level. I may want to do it at the, you know, the expression level. So to do that, we'll need to do add a property as well at the other level. So we'll need to go back to the expression manager. And right here on the very bottom, I'm going to add another, another private action executor. And we'll make it serializable so that we can modify it. It's a realizable field. So we can modify it through the inspector as well. Now if we go back and we refresh, there we go. And we let it compile. Now let's go into our expression manager and we can see that we now have an action. But that's actually not going to work the way that I want it to work because what I want to do is I want it, I want to have it at this level. So let's go back and remove it from here. And I actually want to do it in the expression configuration, which is where this is living. This is the scriptable object. So that was a mistake to put on that in that area. Okay, so now let's go back into Unity and let it compile and you'll see that now we have an action 
So difference between this action and the action that is on the bottom is this is going to be when the expression is detected, like I was saying before, the other one is going to be at the plane shape level. Okay, so how do we test these? And, and the way that I want to test it is I want to create a new expression. So I'm going to duplicate this one. And this one is going to call it, I'm just going to call it surprise. So, and then the blend shape ranges, I'm just going to do, let's just do one for right now. And let's do two, because I want to do both eyes. So what I'm going to do is I, if I'm using the eye blink left, and I'm within 0.5 and 1, and also on the right one, so I want to select the right one too, and I'm also going to do 0.5 and 1, then if any of those happen, I want to call a method. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call uh, a method that is going to change the color of our eye. So I'm just going to say color change left eye color. And we can do the same thing on the, on the one on the bottom, except this is going to be for the right eye. So you say right color, eye color, perfect. And I think that's everything we need. I'm not going to use this one for this example, but I'll show you how we can set it up. Perfect. Now what I want to do is I want to go to the expression manager and I want to change the expression that I'm going to be detecting. So I'm going to change this one to be surprise. Perfect. Now let's go back into Visual Studio Code and we can go back into the expression manager and we're going to have to make some changes in here. So the first change that I need to do is I need to go down to the detect expression method. I also noticed that I had a variable that I wasn't using. Let me just let me just clean that up so we don't we have clean code. All right, so now let's go in and make some changes to this code. So the way that this works is if I have the current blend shapes and if I contain if it contains the key, and this means that ARKit is detecting that blend shape. So if that happens and I'm within the boundaries, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call a method. So what I gotta do here is I gotta do an if statement. And I gotta look at my range. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the action because if you look at the range, it's actually the blank shape range. So this is gonna happen at the blank shape level. So what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, okay, if the action is not null, then I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call a method. So and to do that, we're gonna use something called invoke. And I'm gonna pass in the method name. So I'm gonna say action method name and then we'll do range the action and the delay perfect so what i'm doing is, what i'm doing in here is I'm, if i'm let's say that i'm detecting the you know the movement on my right eye and i'm closing the eye a little bit and i'm within those boundaries and i also set up an action so what that's what's going to happen is i'm actually going to call a meta based on those parameters so in this case i want to call so if we go back into unity and we look at our surprise look at blend shapes and we we want to call a method call change left eye color and also change right eye color so i need to create those two methods so this is going to work just fine there's nothing wrong with that but i need to have those methods in here so it's going to say public void change left color left eye color and i'm also going to do one for the for the right eye color perfect and excellent so that's great. So now what happens if I do, let's say that I set up an action on the, on this, in this area, which, which means that I need to be detecting this blend shape and also this blend shape to be true. If those two are within the boundaries, then I want to call this other method. So to do that, I'm going to have to do something here because this is the method that is actually detecting whether, you know, all the blend shapes are within the boundaries. So I'm going to call, I'm going to actually change this and I'm going to say bool are all set and perfect and i'm going to return our all set and what i'm going to do here so i'm going to say okay if and i need to pass in the i also need to pass in the blend the blend shape range because let me see let me look at this very quick because this is going to be oh i actually need to pass in the configuration so the configuration is going to be the expression configuration so we're just going to say expression configuration configuration and then what i'm going to do here is i'm going to pass that in here 
and then also pass, in, pass that in through this method. And I'm going to say if configuration, and we can do, and looks like I don't have, OK, I know why. Let's go back into, because I don't have access to it. If I look at, if I look for that action, I'm not seeing it. It's probably because I didn't make it serializable. So let's go back to the expression configuration. And I did make it serializable here. But I made it private. OK, that's what uh, that's what the issue is. This happens when you copy and paste code. You make a lot of mistakes because you don't read you don't read what you're doing. <laughs> Let's go back to expression manager and we're gonna go back and say, okay, if the action is not null, meaning that I set it, I'm going to do exactly what I did here. So we're just gonna say invoke, but except it's gonna be configuration instead of range. Excellent. So that code should work just fine. And perfect. And then the other thing that, that I'm going to do here is we have a left eye color and a, and a right eye color. So what I need to do, so if we go back into Unity and we look at the prefabs that I have created. So we have a prefab which is for the eye. And I'm also using just one material. So changing that color, the left and the eye color might not work. We can just use one just to make it simple. So let's do. Instead of, so let's go back into our expressions. Let's go to the surprise. Let's just name these change eye color. And we'll just change both of the eye colors. That's fine. And let's go back in here. And we'll just use one method instead of two. This is just for, just to teach you how this works. And if you want to extend that just to do a specific colors, all you need to do is use a different, basically a different method name. So for simplicity, we'll just do it this way. Perfect. So let's go and check the private variable for the i. So if I look at the i left and, and, and i right, so those are going to have mesh render. So if I go back here and we go and look at the prefab for the i and I go open prefab, they have a mesh render. So I need to get that through the code. So I need to say, you know, the i left get component. And then I need to get the mesh render component. So I'm going to say bar. Let's actually use mesh render instead of bar. And then I left mesh render. Perfect. We'll do the same thing for the right eye. Even though it's the same color, it's going to change the same material. We'll just do both, just, just in case. And then we'll just do right here. Perfect. And this is going to be I right and get component. OK, excellent. So so what I need to do is I need to change the color of the eye. So for now, I need to toggle it. So what I'm going to do too, I'm going to go back up and I'm going to create a new variable. And let's put it under the eyes. And I'm just going to say private bool toggle eye color. So I can keep track of you know, if I set it to one color. And if I toggle it, it sets it to another color. OK, perfect. And we can go back down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a toggle. So I'll just do a not on that variable. And perfect. And then I'll just say I mesh renderer, and then material, and then color. And what I'm going to do, if this is true, which I'm, I'm toggling to true the first time, because this is, all, this is set to false, doing a not on that is going to be true, then I'll just do color black. Otherwise, I'll just do color yellow. And I'll just copy that and then do the same thing for the right eye. And everything will be the same. Perfect. Let me make sure that I name that exactly what it is in the in the actual expression. So I'll go back to expression, surprise. And I always like to double check things just to make sure that I don't skip anything. OK, perfect. And I think everything looks looks good. The the other thing that I'm gonna do just just for the just just to make sure that we're okay, I'm just gonna say if it doesn't equal null, and the action that meta name is not empty, so I just do a string is null or empty, and then I'll just do an I'll just do a not at the beginning. I wanna make sure that it's not null, and also that I have set a method name, and then I'll do the same thing on this guy except this one is going to be range. 
So it's just to make sure that our code is clean and it's going to execute correctly in case in cases the user or the designer of the game makes any mistakes of the app. So yeah, this could be an app or it could be a game. Okay, perfect. So I think all of that should be just fine. So so let me just give you a walkthrough on what's going to happen. So just like I did on the other set on the other videos, we were looping through each configuration. Then for each blend shape or each area of the face, we're getting basically that variable. And if ARKit is sending that information, then that means that it's tracking that part of our face. And if we're within our boundaries, then we're changing the color of the text red, which is what which is what we're using to to debug this, which is the text field that is shown on the screen. And then the next thing, if I set an action for this specific blend shape, then I'm going to execute a method and I'm going to pass in the delay. Then the last thing that's going to happen if all of the blend shapes are within the boundaries, meaning that I capture the expression, then I'm going to execute this method as well. So I think we're good to go. So let's go into Unity and I'm going to build the project. So I'm going to go to, let's go to File, let's wait until it compiles. Perfect. Let's go to Build Settings and then build, and then I'll just build the app, and then a pin, since I already built it before, so it'll it'll be faster. All right, so let me show you how this looks on the phone. All right, guys, so let's open the application. Okay, we can see that it's already capturing my face, and if I close you know, my eyes just a tiny bit, the colors are toggling. And this is also really cool that you can only see only two lines. So you can see that the eye blink left and eye blink right are the only ones that are enabled. And that's because I assign a new expression. So if I want to turn in yellow, I just basically blink. Which is hard to see that I'm blinking because I have a, a sphere on my eyes. But I swear to you, I am blinking. <laughs> All right, so that's everything that I wanted to show you in this video and just to give you a summary of what we did we actually added an action to each blend shape and also an action when we capture an expression so if you guys have any questions let me know through the comments and don't forget to subscribe and also share this video thank you guys